Hi, my name is Clint Ford, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate some tricks to create simple shapes such as arrows with the live paint tool in Adobe Illustrator. So here's what we're going to work with. I'm going to get rid of these for now and start over from scratch, make some new ones. So I've got two layers here. I'm going to work on this arrow layer and I'm going to move it above my jugs one for now. I'm going to zoom in here so I can see what I'm doing. Zoom out so you can see the whole thing. That's kind of what I'm working with. So I'm going to start with an ellipse tool and I'm going to match up the ellipse that's already here. It's pretty good. And that's good enough. I'm going to swap the fill in the stroke and I hit Shift X for that. Give it a black color. Change it to 0.25. And let's see, now I want to enlarge it, so I'm going to just grab this corner, I'm going to hold down my Option and my Shift key so I can drag from the center while keeping it constrained. And I'm going to make a copy of this, I'm going to hold down Option again, drag it down, hold Shift to keep it straight. And that's pretty good. I'm going to make this whole thing a little bit bigger. That's good. Now I just want to use, oh, I just kind of want to rough this in, so I'm going to use the Line tool. And I'm going to close off these ends. I'm going to draw the end of my arrow somewhere around here. I'm going to use my pen tool and I'm going to draw on the head of the arrow somewhere over here. Don't spend too much time on it. Uh, that looks pretty good. And so now what I'm going to do is select the whole thing, go to my live paint tool, K. Pick one of these swatches, start at the back, fill that in, and then just lighten it up a little bit for the front so there's some contrast. Fill all this in, a little spot right there, so I'm going to select the back color with my eyedropper. Fill that in. Oh, there's one over here too. Where is it? Nope. All right, so that's pretty much what we've got. So now, so I can check it out, I'm going to get rid of my stroke. And I think that looks pretty good. And here, from here, you can just edit this, and I can move this around, close this up a little bit, add more space. I think something like that's pretty good. I could adjust my arrowhead, get that where I want it. Maybe that's a little too long. I think that looks pretty good. So the next step will be to expand this, but before I do, you always got to make sure that you don't plan on editing, editing this at all later on because once you expand this, it's going to be hard to edit. So I think it's pretty good the way it is. So I'm going to expand it. And you can see what it does is it breaks this up into shapes. So now I want to go and unite those to make it easier to add a gradient to. So I'm double clicking to go into the group. I'm going to select this whole area. I'm going to deselect these little red ones in the back. And then I'm going to go to my Pathfinder palette and hit my Unite. Do the same on the other side. Unite those. Back is just one, sh nope, there's a shape, so I unite that. Now I have three shapes to work with. So I'm just going to add some gradient to this. I'm going to select the back one. Use my gradient swatch that I made previously. Not to the stroke, but to the fill. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to do the same thing with the front. Use that swatch, but it's got too many stops, so I'm going to get rid of this one, bring this over. I want to change the direction of this, there's a little more contrast on it. Separate it from the back a little bit. That's pretty good. Um, do the same thing over here. I'm going to use my eyedropper and select the gradient over here. Match it up. Go back to my gradient tool and adjust that. That looks pretty good. Happy with that, so I'll drag this arrow layer down underneath this one, and that's what you get. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to do that other arrow. So what I'm going to do is just draw an ellipse. I'm, I always hold down my Option key. I like dragging circles and ellipses from the center. Hold down my Shift, keep it constrained. And get rid of this fill, add a stroke, like that. And what I'm going to do in this case is just increase the stroke of this until I like the width of it. 
a little too much. Something like that. Now I'm going to expand this, go to Object Path, um, Outline Stroke. And now I'm going to, let's see, I'm just going to swap my fill and my stroke so I have some lines to work with. I'm going to draw in my arrowhead, probably over here somewhere for now. I'm going to use the star tool actually to make a triangle. So what you do here is nudge, use your uh, down arrow key to change how many points there is. So I'm going to go down to the triangle. And I'm going to hold down my shift to keep it all nice and straight, like so. Kind of adjust it like this. Put it somewhere right about here, kind of on the center of the circle. That's pretty good. Even my arrow key nudge it over a little bit. Now I'm going to draw in where the end would be. So I'm going to find the center point of my circle. I'm just going to draw a line out like this. Actually, I think that was an ellipse. I'm going to use a line. Okay, draw a line out. <clears throat> now I can select all this, do the same thing, use my live paint tool K. Okay. Fill it in with some color, like so. I'm going to maybe do that a different color just for now. And there you have an arrow like this. So now what I'm going to do is take off the stroke again, see how it looks. Um, I'm going to use my white arrow with the plus. And now you can rotate this around and change this if you want to. So I'm going to hit R for rotate. I'm going to pick the this anchor point to rotate it from. And then you can adjust where the end of this arrow is pretty easily. So I'm going to leave it there somewhere right here for now. Now nah, right there. All right, so same thing. You want to make sure it's exactly the way you want it before you expand it. I'm not crazy about this. I'm double clicking to go into this live paint group. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. And I like the way that looks. So now I'm ready to expand it. Do the same thing. I'm going to unite these shapes. Got to go into the group. So I'm going to select them all except for the blue. I'm going to unite them. Now I have two shapes to work with. Um, so maybe on this one I would just add a little bit of gradient to this, to the fill, and then adjust this. So it's coming from the end of the other arrow. Use my gradient tool the other way. And you can do something like that. So that's about it. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching.